he's going to talk to us about the world of TV directing. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Right, so let's take a look at your showreel. So you worked on a variety of projects like children's shows, music videos, short films. What first got you interested in film? Uh, I went to see 2001 when I was a kid and it blew my mind. Uh, and uh, I just always had a fascination with movies and I loved stills cameras. That was my uh, hobby when I was a little kid. And I thought that directing was maybe something that rich people did. So yeah. it wasn't for me, but then a friend of the family was a TV director and then told me that you can come from a poor family and, and uh, do it as possible. Um, so that's what inspired me to, to get into it really. Uh, and I went to film school. Which was for a while before. And that leads us into where did you study? I studied at Newport Film School uh, and it was uh, a waste of my time. It was three years that I, I could have taught you what I learned in a weekend. Right, okay, that sounds very promising. Um, what made you more interested in comedy opposed to serious drama in your early years? Uh, I love both, but comedy is just um, just a passion of mine that I just really enjoy. It's just it's just more fun to film yeah. uh, comedy stuff than it is to do dramatic stuff. Oh, okay, um, and practically as well, uh, BBC Comedy's kind of moved a big chunk uh, of its operations to Manchester yeah. uh, to move to children's to Manchester, which is all comedy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sort of serious kid stuff, so and it suits my style, and it suits the fact that I want to stay living in. That's yeah, very good. Um, right, so let's have a look at one of your most recent horror films. Story about that. I, um, I send it to um, film festivals around the world, and usually they send you an email saying they like it, they don't like it, they show it, they don't. I got a call from Houston, and they said, "Hey, Matt, uh, we've seen your film, we love your film, but it's unacceptably pornographic." Um, the film starts off with yeah, but it's not really. It's not really. It's, it's a woman naked in the shower, yeah. but you just see her back. It's not really um, and I was kind of confused about this. Um, yes, yeah, uh, and they said it's unacceptable amount of butt crack. <laughs> you can't show that. And I said, well, what about all the blood and the violence and, you know, knives against children's throats? Oh, that's fine. You can show that in American uh, festivals, but you can't show an ass. Um, so I said, if I cut that ass out, which is just like six frames, and just start a few frames later when it's just on her back rather than join a slight curvature of this woman's bottom, would that be all right? That's fine. So I, I cut the bottom out, and it won an award, and they were happy. Uh, Americans, uh, very strange place, you can bomb a rack all you want and everyone's fine on the news, but you show Janet Jackson's nipple at the Super Bowl and the world goes crazy. Right. What was the last project that you worked on? The uh, last project was called The um, Pink Zipser, which is um, the childhood memories of Henry Winkler who played the Fonz in Happy Days. When he got uh, famous, he uh, revealed that he had severe dyslexia as a kid and he had a very bad childhood because his parents called him a dumb dog his teachers treated him really badly and he poured all of this bad childhood into a series of comedy books which the BBC bought and then we turned into a, it turned out to be a hit show so it's just we were doing a second series of that and he stars in that and he plays the only teacher that's nice to himself as a child so it's really quite weird for him to dress as a he's great he's an extraordinarily famous man and he's mega famous because yeah, the Fonz is quoted by Tim Tino he's Coca-Cola kind of famous iconic famous 
uh, we were in a restaurant together and a man came up and stroked his face. Uh, that's, right. that's, that's, that's the level of fame. Wow. Um, right, so let's have a look in the clip of that, shall we? Sure. Sorry I'm late. You worry because we were just picking partners, and it looks like Hank needs one. You've won various awards in your career. What was it like to win your first award? Uh, it's really important. I mean, awards, as you know, they, they're just fluff, they don't really mean yeah. anything, and you're just helping your ego on the one hand. But on the other hand, it's kind of recognition is really important because yeah. when you're dealing with if you're a scientist or a computer programmer, there are hard facts about how good you are at your science yeah. or, or how good you are at computer programming. Uh, whereas in an art, it's kind of ephemeral and you don't know how to judge it. Uh, and your worth is defined by ratings, how much money uh, in box office something takes and how many awards uh, it wins. So in the end, they end up being really important for your future career as an advert for how good you are. It's ridiculous because art shouldn't be defined by those kind of terms, but um, it does help you. What was the most prestigious award you won? Um, uh, Endless, the horror film, won um, the best short film at the London Independent Film Festival, so that's that was pretty good. That was quite prestigious, and um, uh, it was good because Endless is kind of an experimental film, and it was made for a tiny amount, of 400, 500 pounds. So um, that's good. That was very good considering it's pounds. Well, again, because it came out of my pocket, and I don't always have a lot of money. Um, uh, it's just coming completely out of my pocket. So it's, it's ridiculous. You're, uh, when I'm making TV, I'm dealing with hundreds of thousands of pounds, sometimes millions of pounds, but it's someone else's money. Uh, when it's mine, it's, I have to think, you know, am I going to pay the rent, or am I going to go on holiday, or am I going to spend it on a uh, show? Great, thank you for Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.